What is up, disc golfers? Today on Iceberg TV, we're going to be watching this clip from the 2024 Waco press conference. We have Jeremy Coling on the mic. Now, Jeremy gave us a very heartfelt message and also hinted towards his retirement. So I want to reflect on my favorite Jeremy Coling moment, talk about a few of his best wins, and also share this message with you guys who have not had the chance to watch the uh, press conference yet. Let's listen to the clip. Fox Pro. Uh, a few months ago, um, it was a great event. I actually had a little Q&A, and one of the questions was, uh, what's the one thing that you're most proud of in your career? And I wasn't expecting to get emotional from that question, but it's probably the first time that I, I like, really stopped myself and like, reflected on the fact that I am a veteran on my way out of the Pro Tour eventually. You know, like I'm, I'm 38 years old, and I've done a lot of things in disc golf and for disc golf and my entire adult life has been disc golf and now I'm at the place in my career where I can look back and say wow like this has taken me across the world and has has started so many amazing friendships and it's connected and impacted so many people and that's it's a really special thing to be able to reflect on that on that stuff um and yeah and when that question was asked at the uh, at the expo it was like this like full circle moment where I was like wow like I can actually think about all these things and consider what thing I'm most proud of. In the end, my answer was uh, sharing the story about me working on my, my dental stuff because that impacted so many people in different ways, and that was really the thing that I think was most impactful to the people around me. So, But, you know, you think about winning here and winning at other Elite Series events, and the wins are cool, but it's really the friendships and the, the, the fr the, honestly, the lifelong friendships are the thing that's the most important thing. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. Thanks for sharing. And you just said something in that answer that I want you to expand on a little bit more. You said you're on your way out of the Pro Tour. How do you make the decision to continue showing up for these Elite Series events? Like, how do you determine whether or not you want to focus more on the media side of things and with Jomez and the Disc Golf Network, or whether you still want to try and compete at the top level and, and win another Elite Series or win another major? That's a multi um, I particularly like this question from Nate Perkins, and I feel some genuine authenticity. He's not just asking it because it's a good question. Nate Perkins has not been a fixture on the Pro Tour for a few years now. He no longer plays for Discmania. He had a few different sponsorship changes. We saw him playing at some of those A tiers in Australia and New Zealand, but we're not really seeing Nate Perkins out on the tour nearly as much as we used to. So that question coming from someone who decided to step more into the media side and give up some of his stake as a player, I think this is a really powerful question um, from Nate Perkins, and it's a more powerful question than it would have been from maybe somebody else. Faceted answer. Part of the answer is those guys that are on the course right now practicing, they just keep getting younger and younger and better and better. So they're kind of forcing me out in some ways. I mean, I'm still holding my own. My rating really hasn't changed in 12 to 15 years. But what 1020 golf gets you over the course of three to four rounds on, on tour is different than what it used to be five, six years ago. Um, and so, you know, part of it is the competition. is It's hard to keep up. I've got to work twice as hard just to stay in the same spot. Um, and the other thing is I'm so enticed. I love doing the media stuff. I love doing commentary. I love being a, a host, a, just a personality in the sport. And I love being an ambassador and growing the sport outside of the course. So for me, it's, it's really, I get to enjoy that more when I focus more on it. Um, but also it's, I mean, my, I'm getting older, dude. My body's breaking down. Like I, I got a sh sore shoulder right now. And, um, you know, I've got to like limit my practice this week going into an event that I feel really comfortable at. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just, there's a lot of different things that play into that. And, you know, you have to be kind of, you have to be truthful with yourself. Like you want to, you want to uh, be competitive. And when you're not competitive, you got to start thinking like, all right, man, I'm eligible to play Masters next year. Maybe I might be playing some Masters next year, you know? So I'm still going to be around, you know, you know, they're not, they can't kick me away yet. We're going to pause Big Germ right there, and we are going to cut the clip. I will credit this video at the link in the description below. This is the press conference um, from the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Not only Jeremy was on there, but several other Pro Tour players and some other special guests. So now we're going to take a look at Jeremy's PDGA page. He's participated in 446 events. He's taken away 
77 wins, and he has grossed almost a quarter million dollars in prize winnings. So I think hitting that quarter million dollar cash mark is definitely a massive achievement. And one, you know, last final goal that Jeremy could definitely strive for just because that 250k is going to look extra clean on that PDGA profile. Now, my favorite Jeremy Coling moment. This is the 2019 United States Disc Golf Championships where we saw James Conrad take it down. But what a lot of you guys did not see a bunch of cards back, my dog, Jeremy Colin, shoots a 61 in the final round, bringing it within one stroke of James Conrad. And Jeremy shot an absolute heater that round. And that round is also in a YouTube video from the Disc Golf Kid. I will link that in the description below as well. But if Jeremy Colin could have taken down a second USDGC, he would fit in a very different place in, you know, the greatest players of all time conversation. If he could have come away with another major, that would have silenced a lot of people that, that you know, at that point thought Jeremy Colling was washed then. And he, he almost put himself in a position to win another major, which would have been a very exciting. And I'll link that round in the description below. If you have not seen that, Jeremy played a heck of a round in 2019. And yeah, it would have been really fun to see Jeremy steal that one from a few cards back from James Conrad. But now we'll just take one last look at Jeremy's biggest wins. He won Amateur Worlds in 2008. He won the USDGC in 2016. He won an NT at the Memorial, and he also won an NT at Maple Hill. And he also won Waco two times before it was, um, you know, NT or, or uh, any any big titles like that but it was a huge tournament back then and he beat all the best players and he won waco two times so jeremy Colling has had a very illustrious career he's played in a bunch of different countries he did lock down a major victory and man he was so close to winning another major that really changes where he stands on the greatest of all time list now i'm not saying he is the greatest of all time or one of the greatest of all time but if he won another major and won another usdgc he would at least be in the conversation because to have two modern era USDGC wins, that puts you above 99% of the players on tour. But anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. Would you like to see Jeremy Colling more as a media guy? Or do you want to see Jeremy Colling play Masters? I think Masters in a few years is going to be very entertaining to watch. Um, again, players like Kayla Visca, some of the players that you're not really seeing as a you know quote unquote touring professional anymore a lot of those guys are still out grinding the masters tour and it's very exciting sometimes you see carl johan naibo out there you see all kinds of exciting characters that we we used to watch back in the day but anyway let me know what you think in the comment section down below you guys are watching iceberg tv and take care